How else did I was popping was cracking its deep. Boss reacted to this vid by Triple OC. It's titled The Problem with Bia. Um, there are multiple problems with Bia, in my opinion. Um, I have tried with her many times. I've tried to get into her music. It's just not for me. I find maybe it's her voice. Something is boring me and it's just not sticking out. Um, I saw my, my homepage that she has a new song out. Didn't even check it out. I just feel like I'm, I'm done giving her chances. There are certain artists where, you know, I just, I give up after a certain point. You know, maybe I'll try with her again after some time, but <laughs> I'm bored with her. But, but let's hear what they have to say. Let's watch. One of my favorite things that happens every so often in rap music is when two artists collaborate and it almost feels like they fit together perfectly on a track. Whether it's the cadence of their words, the way they're going back and forth on the fly. song, or simply them matching each other's fly. And luckily for Bia, she has a few songs with different artists where the features, slow, and her raps fit together perfectly. From London with J. Cole, to her newest London track, Pissed Off with Lil Yachty, and of course, the Whole Lot of Money remix with Nicki Minaj. But although I've been enjoying a couple of her singles, there's something I've been noticing about Bia, and I think we should talk about it. But first, welcome to the channel. Hey, hi, what's up, what did I see? And I do rap and pop culture commentary. So if you're into that, subscribe and hit the like button. Now, can I keep it real? Sometimes I don't really care for an artist's discography and they pop out with a track that makes me reconsider, read some literature. And that's how I feel about Bia's newest song with Lil Yachty, Pissed Off. Tonight yes, it's a story. short and for the most part, sweet verse and serves as an opportunity for her to shit on her ops, whoever they might be, okay? But to Cardi, me, it finally yeah. feels like she's found her way in the female rap space, and she's staying put in her own lane. Even if that means that almost every song will have a few subliminals, because rapping about people's BMs being sluts and wives being cheery hoes just feels very personal. If you're like me, you were introduced to Bia way back in 2021 with her breakout single, Whole Lot of Money, and that was the fifth single from her second EP, For Certain. Prior to this, I hadn't really heard a lot from Bia, to be honest. And in a way, it seemed like she completely popped out of nowhere. It turns out she decided to become a rapper at a young age after attending studio sessions with artists and helping them record, dropping out of college to bartend, and then making enough for her own studio sessions. After doing a little bit more research on her, I realized that she was actually a reality TV show fatty. But wait, it's really? not that kind of fatty. But she was part of a show. Oh, that picture is real. Oh my god! I thought I thought that picture was, was edited. Oh my god! Which it that kind? It's not. It's just I realized you... that she was actually a reality TV show fatty. But wait, oh, this whole time I was like, why would they edit this woman's face to look this ugly? And there was no edit. You know, because yeah, when you you know do certain things, move your face certain ways. Your your jawline does change a bit, you know. So her jawline just changes drastically and it looks really bad. Anyway, it's not, not it's not that kind of baddie. But she was part of a show on Oxygen called Sisterhood of Hip Hop, which is executively produced by T.I. Essentially, the show stars five female rappers who navigate their way through the male-dominated music industry. But the cast and the show itself is so weird. It's like they mixed in more seasoned artists like Diamond from Crime Mob to newer artists like Bia, who clearly were much newer on the scene. I'll be honest and say I have literally never heard of this show, but somehow I do feel inclined to go back and watch it. Based on some of these clips though, I'm not sure what to make of it. It seems like T.I. Awesome. wanted a combination of the messiness of love and hip hop, but the vibe of, okay, who am I kidding? He was trying to do a female rap version of love and hip hop. Even Vibe magazine wrote an article showcasing how the show was more about the drama of these ladies' lives oh. rather than solely focusing on their music. And this feels like a bit of foreshadowing with Bia's career if we're keeping it real. Because we all know that if everyone is not feeling your music and you have a feeling they may not be feeling your music, the next best thing for you to do is add That's a little bit of drama to the mix. One person that I blindly envisioned Bia collaborating with very early in her career was Cardi B. And the reason why is not only did Cardi support Bia very early on, you can even see her in lives mm -hmm. singing a whole lot of money. It also felt like they could have a track that meshed both of their sounds. However, we all know that one of the smartest choices that Bia made business-wise essentially turned her into having to choose sides, which included being able to snag a Nicki feature on a whole lot of money 
and paved the way for Super Freaky Girl Queen Mix and even going on tour with Nicki. Now, if you remember this era between the lives of Nicki and Bia, social media saying that Bia was in the bathroom deleting Cardi B tweets and all of that, listen, it was hilarious because previously <laughs> Bia was praising Cardi everything? online. Between her hopping on oh, live, was on her. because previously Bia was to the girl. praising Cardi online. Between her hopping on live to say that she never switched up on Cardi because she never that knew her in real life, yeah. dissing Cardi on Drizzy's which duh remix, with lines poking fun at Cardi not being able to catch the beat on what would have been the remix of Ice Spice's Munch, and always crying on live about Offset. Wow. See, look how time yeah, be a lane for that. Look at this now. The Bia that I somewhat enjoyed listening to quickly became someone whose career was revolving around another woman in rap music. At least that's how it felt. I feel like you only get so many tracks to continuously poke fun at or beef with another rap artist until it begins to look like you are fishing for mm -hmm. response and maybe even flowers. If your best verses, features, and songs only turn heads and cause social media chatter because you're dissing, what exactly is it giving? Then again, I can't deny that many songs that are popping, especially in the female rap space, involve at least one bar about the artist being better than all these other money girls. Long a little bit so over here. is it really any different from that? But funny enough, we know that Cardi clapped back directly on Megan and Glorilla's Wannabe remix, which now that I think about it, it feels like that song did not have the desired effect that they thought it yeah, would. I did not like or it. maybe Cardi just, just used it to clap back. Because it. surely I enjoyed Cardi's Megan bars on the Glow. song. And I even like it a little bit better than the original. Oh, no. Maybe it's the fact that it feels like they kind of slapped her on the beginning of the song instead of either saving her verse for last or squeezing her between the two artists. Clearly the track struck a nerve because Bia hasn't been letting up ever since. And while many of the critiques I hear of Bia include the fact that her music is straight up boring, something that I, I understand, right? She has more of a nonchalant flow. Her voice is boring. She's kind she of like a fattyfied version of okay. Caribou. You know, when you think about it, my view is that she's boring unless she's talking her ish or dissing. Because I find it just a little funny that not long ago she was accusing people of stealing her style. And of course, we style. cannot forget that she had a whole diss track ready to unleash on Cardi. That sucked from the snippet that I heard online. Like, I felt secondhand embarrassment. This is why you need friends to tell you when something. I like the you. flow. And I ain't that feels like another part of the problem. <laughs> but I mean, I didn't listen to it always much. clap back in music it wasn't or good, sneak but this because now I thought the popping. chorus was kind of catchy. Now, will these songs have the same effect? Will they age well? Will they sound great? Or were they only created to serve the purpose of shutting these but girls the down right wasn't. now, present day? I don't know. But she did chat about Cardi cheating on Offset a few months back, so I wonder how she knew about that. If it's even true. Anyways, oh. what can we say? Bia has been... Uh, Cardi responded. <laughs> People on Twitter like, oh, Bia was right. I guess she did know what she was talking about. And Cardi responded like, that bitch ain't no shit. <laughs> I was like, oh. So, um, yeah, Cardi was saying like she didn't know nothing and blah, blah, blah. I guess she's saying that wasn't happening around that time. I guess. And other people also are saying that, oh, Cardi probably lied about the whole thing about sleeping with somebody while pregnant i don't know about that either who would lie about something like that and especially knowing that that's going to be on the internet forever for your child to 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 eventually see why would you even risk that just because you want to hurt someone that bad like no i think she actually did it and she's disturbed and out here doing her thing joining nikki on the gag city reloaded tour dropping some pretty good singles i feel a bit more interested in actually listening to some of her music now and I don't believe she's dropped an actual studio album, so maybe that's coming next. Also, this Girl, is so random. Know. Do you know what I just realized? Bia really reminds me of Emil, the first female artist to sign to Rocket for the Records. More so aesthetically rather than sound wise, though, Emil just felt more. Oh, wait, hipster. this is kind of. Something that apparently Jay Z was pushing her to be, and she didn't really enjoy that. And since then, she's. Wait, faded what is she? Away. We really what, need what, a what song is she on? on female rap artists that completely vanished out of the spotlight. But anyways, do you listen to Bia? And Wait, I, I kind of am recalling what her voice sound like very vaguely. I feel like she was on a song, an old school song that was really popular. Uh, what was it? But yeah, her voice was like monotone and like dry. And look, she didn't go that far, so. 
that should tell you what you need to know. Bobby, I think she needs to get a personality or something on, on, on the tracks. Like, you got to give us something. I don't want to hear nobody just, girl, give me something. Something. So that's my issue with her. And I don't think she's that lyrically skilled also. I mean, she's decent, but she's not that great. So her boring, boring monotone voice uh, combined with the fact that her lyrics aren't that, you know, exciting. It just makes for a boring artist with boring songs. And that's what she, she gives in my personal opinion. But, you know, she's for somebody apparently because, you know, some people like it. I kind of listened to the Lil Yachty song, though, because she, she kind of hyped it up. <laughs> I might check it out, though. Y'all let me know what y'all think about Bia, though. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all the next time. Bye!